Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today for a brand new series of studies entitled Managing for the Master. Our topic today, part of God's family. What an incredible thought. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to the team. Yes. Good to be together studying an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're glad you're here in the studio. We've also got some remote team members who are joining us today. Sabina, good to have you with us as one of our team members. Uh, we've also got, uh, let's see who's coming next. Travis, good to see you again, Travis. Glad you're with us. And we've also got Amy. Amy, good to see you with us today. We're going to have a great study of the Word of God. And we're also excited to tell you about a free resource we have for this series on managing for the master. It's an it's a interactive study called Steps Toward Faithful Stewardship. I've been taking it myself, and I particularly like the third section on ma managing your time. If you just looked at that, no, look at the whole series, and it's yours free, you just have to go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, click on the free gift button, and you can get access to that course at no cost. It will be a huge blessing to you. So don't forget, Steps Toward Faithful Stewardship, you'll find it on our website. Well, we're always happy to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. Don't you like to hear from people everywhere around the world? It's so amazing. Here's one from Lorraine in South Africa. Lorraine, thanks for writing to us. She says, I've been watching Hope Sabbath School since I first started viewing in South Africa, and I found this most rewarding and have encouraged others to watch Hope Sabbath School too. That's awesome. What do we call that? That's a witness, right? when you encourage other people. It really enriches my spiritual walk. Mm. Yes. We would just like to give thanks to the whole team mm -hmm. who bring the beautiful studies and other programs to us as well. Well, Lorraine, thanks for writing to us from Amen. South Africa. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's awesome that she's an evangelist there sharing with others. Right. Here's a short note from Teresa and Denise, or Dennis, excuse me, in Italy. And they say, Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior. And you got to wave. <laughs> Praise the Lord for Hope Sabbath School. Yes. May God bless you all. And they write, we'll see you in heaven soon. Amen? Amen. 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 Thanks for writing yes. to us from Italy. Yes. Here's a donor note. Thank you to all of our donors. We're a donor-supported ministry. You're part of the great miracle of God when you partner with us. And this donor writes to us from Georgia in the United States and says, thank you once again for all you do to make the Word of God plain. Yes. Amen. Your worldwide efforts are making a difference to hasten the coming of Jesus. And we say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I was filled with joy beyond measure when you read my letter on a previous program. So here is a donor who is now writing to us again. Because of my loss of sight, I'm very dependent on hearing, and you read every word, and I'm encouraged yes. to hold on to God, Amen. who will make all things new. Amen. 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 I look forward to greeting you all in heaven and enjoying the sights <laughs> and sounds together. Yes. Amen. Continue your valuable ministry. You make a difference to so many, and a donation of $100 Amen. to bless the ministry of Hope Sabbath School. Thank you so much, donor. You know who you are there in Georgia. And yes, I'm so thankful, too, that God is going to make all things new. If you would like to also partner with us, you can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on the donate button, and we all jump up and down because we're all part of the miracle of God. One last note from Cameroon. That's West Africa. And Precious, what a name. Precious writes mm. and says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School team. Hello. Hello. Got the wave. It's a pleasure writing to you. My name is Precious, all the way from Cameroon in West Africa. I love you all, and mm -hmm. I love the program. God bless you and give you strength to continue the good works. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, Precious, thank you for writing to us. We're so glad that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Right now, we need to invite all of you to sing with us our new theme song. It's taken from Psalm 96. So it's a 3,000-year-old scripture song. My wife put a new tune to it so we can sing it together. Mm -hmm. Sing to the Lord. Let's sing it together.
amazing song, 3,000 years old and yet calling us today to just praise God. And as we're studying this topic of part of God's family, let's pray the Holy Spirit will guide us in our study. In the name of Jesus, we pray, our Father in heaven, that you would guide us in our study today. We're beginning this series, and I pray that you would lead us into truth that would not only bless our lives and set us free, but through us would be a blessing to those around us. Yes. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'd like to begin. Uh, Gladys, maybe you could read the first text from Matthew 6, verse 9. It's actually embedded in what we call the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. But it addresses the amazing topic of being part of God's family. Would you read to us Matthew 6 and verse 9? Sure, I'm reading from the New International Version. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So why do you think Jason, God, uh, Jesus here says, call the Almighty God, the Sovereign, right? Call him Father, not just Father, but our Father. Our Father. Mm -hmm. Because he's talking about relationship and particularly this familial relationship. There's a personal connection. While he is the God of all, he also has an intimate relationship he wants with each of us. Well, let's go on and look. Maybe, Harold, you can read for us in John 20 and verse 17 because Jesus amplifies that amazing thought that we are actually part of God's family and we can call him our Father. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, John 20 and verse 17. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, <laughs> and to my God and your God. Brittany, what do you hear there? I mean, it's pretty amazing. He's talking to Mary, right, at the tomb. What do you hear him sharing with her? 
He's giving her confidence that she can approach the father just the same as before Jesus died and rose again, that even more so because of Christ's death for us, we are adopted into the family of God. And Jesus wanted her to know, even though he was ascending to the father, it's not just his father, it's all of our fathers. Beautiful, yes. and, and did you notice uh, how he refers to the other disciples? He doesn't just say, my disciples. Mm -hmm. what, what does he say? My brethren. My brethren, my, my brothers. brothers is like, Wow, we are part of yes. the family of God. Mm -hmm. I think the Apostle Paul grasped that powerful truth. Let's look in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 14 and 15. Brittany, do you have that for us? Ephesians 3, writing to the Christians in Ephesus, but I think to all of us too. What does Paul say? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. <laughs> <laughs> We're part, isn't there a gospel song, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God? Yes. Uh, Amy, could you take us to 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and then I want to ask us all a question. Uh, maybe, Travis, you can start with the reflection. How, how do you feel to be called part of the family of God. What an amazing thought. But let's look first in 1 John 3, uh, verses 1 and 2, Amy. Okay, and I'll be reading from New King James Version. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Behold, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Thank you for that smile. Someone used my favorite Hebrew word. Hallelujah. That's right. That's, that's an amazing thought, isn't it? We're not, well, we'll let you in. You can be servants. Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, but friends. But this goes to the next level. Family. I no longer just call you friends. I call you Brothers. family. 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 So, Travis, maybe you can start uh, interacting with us. What, what does it feel like to you to be called part of the family of God? Well, Derek, uh, it means a lot to me because I come from a broken family. So, mm. um, as I see families, um, moms and dads and children, um, worshiping together, praying together, playing together, working together, it's always been something that I wish that I'd had growing up. And uh, so now to be a part of the family of God is even better. I mean, it takes it even to the next level. So sometimes I have a hard time wrapping uh, my head around this idea that I can be a part of this family. But for, sh for sure, it is just an amazing concept to me and brings joy to my heart. Well, I appreciate, Travis, when you were sharing that you're smiling because yeah. it, it's an amazing thought. Samuel, what does it mean to you to, to be part of the family of God? Sure, and uh, and our Derek, when we read uh, the scripture from Ephesians, you know, it talks about how you know we're all, uh, you know, every family in heaven and earth is named after the Father. You know, the last names are used to identify family and lineage. Mm. You know, we all have different last names, but in heaven's sight, we all share the same last name. We mm. all belong to the same family of God. Beautiful. Amen. So it would be Lelika of the Father, <laughs> right? <laughs> Gladys of the Father, Alex Amen. of the Father. Yeah. Well, actually, it's more, it's Father, Son, and Holy yeah, Spirit, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, we're part of the family of God. Anybody else, what does it, Jason, what does it do for your heart? Uh, part of the family of God. So it excites me. And one thing that I find pretty cool here is uh, it says it's going to be revealed. So apparently this family part, we don't fully understand it yet. Like whether you had good families or maybe you had some struggles like Travis said, there's going to be a greater experience of being part of the family of God that maybe we can't even see right now here on earth that we get to look forward to. Beautiful. Carlos, uh, for you, what does it mean to be part of the family of God? Well, being part of the family of God also includes that God will help us with our needs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for some people who may not have the physical family that uh, they so desperately need, but God the Father will be there for them. And uh, also their social needs, the environment around them, emotional needs. Family generally are supposed to be uh, support each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what it means 
to be able to have that family, that connection, that relationship. Beautiful. And we're yeah. actually going to come to that now as we continue our study, because yeah. he doesn't just say you're part of the family of God. There are implications, like Carlos yeah. pointed out, right, to yeah. being part of his family. It's, it's not just having the last name, as wonderful as that is. So let's continue our study. And, and let's note that our Father in heaven is the owner of everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sabina, Amen. could you read to us from Psalm 24 and verse 1? Psalm 24 and verse 1. Yes, uh, Psalm 24, verse 1. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, The earth is the Lord's and all its in, in its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. And to reinforce that, thank you for sharing. Lalika, could you go to Psalm 50 and verses 10 through 12? Uh, we've heard the psalmist say, basically, how much belongs to the Lord? <laughs> everything. everything. Well, not just the globe, but the world. everything on it, yeah. right? Yes. Which includes us. 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 That's right. That's <laughs> yes. the good news, right? We're part of the family. Lalika, could you read Psalm 50 verses uh, 10 through 12? Yes. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Psalm 50, verse 10 to 12. For every beast of the, the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. Mm. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Mm. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, <laughs> for the world is mine and all its fullness. So actually, if you read the Psalms, there's a lot of praise that God is the owner of everything. But I want to go to a little known minor prophet. Alex, could you find the book of Haggai? I mean, it's just a little book right there near the end of the Old Testament. Haggai chapter yes. 2, verses 6 through 8. Um, here's another inspired testimony. By the way, the Bible teaches that Scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? So it's not just the opinion of the psalmist or the opinion of Haggai. Uh, what's his testimony in chapter 2, verses 6 through 8? Alrighty, and I'll be reading from the New King James. It says, starting in verse 6, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. Mm -hmm. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. And then says in verse 8, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I like that Haggai is pointing out, but, but we would add the silver is mine, the gold is mine, and... Us. us. And us. Well, and we're, us. we're his too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's really good news. Harold, could you read to us from First Chronicles 29, where King David makes a confession as he's gathering all of the materials. You know he wanted to build a temple, yep. mm -hmm. and the Lord says, no, you have too much blood on your hands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give that privilege to your son. But he gathers the materials, and it's recorded there in First Chronicles 29, verses 13 and 14, Harold. Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. And it says, Now therefore... Our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you and of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. All right, so here's uh, David, King David, and he's basically saying, well, we're bringing these gifts to you. But it's from yeah, what? finish the sentence. It's we're bringing these gifts to you. But it's from what you gave us. <laughs> yeah. So it's yours already, exactly. right? Yeah. So here's the question. If God is the owner of everything, yeah. how should we relate to the blessings He gives us. Let's think about some of the blessings. We'll actually talk about it a little later, but just quickly, what are some blessings He gives to us? Salvation. Salvation, that's a big one. Life. 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 Mm -hmm. Family. Family. Food. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Holy Spirit. The privilege of sharing the gospel. The privilege yeah. of, of being part of His uh, mission team, right? Yeah. Sharing the gospel. So. How do we relate? But typically here, we're thinking about material possessions especially. 
uh, if everything belongs to God, how should we relate to the things that we own, so mm -hmm. to speak, or the things that we feel belong to us? Alex? Yes, it, it's really important how we treat those things because it's, it's like as if a friend is giving you a gift, right? And depending how you treat that gift, it really shows you how much appreciated you are of that gift. So it's, it's the same thing with God. When He gives us all of these things, which everything belongs to Him, we are to take care of it and to show that we are really appreciated for what He has done for us. And That's a good point that Alex has made. I see some other hands are raised here. Uh, it's, it's that we're actually respecting the relationship mm -hmm. yes. Yes. by the way we yeah. care for the gifts. Brittany? Yeah. I think we should also hold on to what God has given us very loosely because mm -hmm. He wants us to share. He doesn't want us to think <laughs> yeah. that, oh, this is yours, you get to keep it now. It's mm. actually given to us so that then we can help somebody else, mm -hmm. um, that we can be that channel of blessing to others. All right, Travis, what, what, what do you think here? How do, how do we handle the blessings uh, if everything really belongs to God? So I think it, it would be uh, better suited to um, look at these, look at ourselves as stewards rather than owners. Mm. I don't own my house, but rather I'm a steward of that. God has given it to me, and it, and it, if requested, I, I should return it to Him if that need be. So I just like instead of being I own this, I own that. I'm rather I'm a steward of all these things, and and I have a responsibility as a steward. And Travis is speaking to us having had a very successful business and a lot of things, <laughs> but he's recognizing that all of those things were just stewards of, of the blessings God has given us. Uh, Jason and then Sabina. Yes, yeah, so I remember when I first uh, moved to an area and I didn't have a vehicle, I had a friend who had a car that she would uh, give me rides and everything. And I was like, why are you so generous? And she's like, because I didn't have a car and I asked God, he <laughs> gave it to me, I don't own it. And so I use it for his resources. And so then when I got a car, I give rides to people and they're like, why are you being so generous? Like, this is not <laughs> mine. God's giving me this to utilize for his purposes. Amen. That really, that really reinforces that, that these are just gifts uh, that have been given. Sabina. I also find that, you know, nowadays because of the way that we live and everything, we are always called into being never satisfied. Mm. There is a call to want more and more and more and never be enough. And I sense that with this perspective, it, at least to me, it gives me a heart of thankfulness and gratefulness mm. for everything that God has blessed me with. Mm. And a sense also of abiding in Him and trusting instead of just being never ending, uh, pursuing things all the time. Not that we are not supposed to be eager to grow and to develop, but at the same time, it's, there is a sense of peace that he cares for us. And that's enough. Amen. 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 You know, I remember a bumper sticker. Now, this may not mean much. We've got Hope Sabbath School members all around the world, but at least in some parts of the world, they put little stickers on the back of the car. Yeah. I saw a sticker that said, the person who dies with the most toys wins. Mm. That's that kind of mm -hmm. uh, possession, mm -hmm. the, the kleptomania type, <laughs> more and more stuff that Sabina was talking about. But I saw another sticker that said, the person who dies with the most toys still dies. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. So thinking yeah. about the possessions that come to us, we're going to move on to the next part of our study. And Carlos alluded to it earlier when he said, when we're part of God's family, He cares for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's take a look at a few verses that emphasize that. And uh, Brittany, I don't know if you were the one that mentioned one of the biggest gifts that He gives to yeah. us. We might say, well, food, how, let's go to the big gifts first, yeah. John 3 verses 16 and 17. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Yeah. John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. Amen. So if, Amen. if Jesus, Son of God, Savior, was the only 
resource that was given to us as part of God's family, what do you think? It's more than enough. That's more enough. than yeah. enough, yeah. right? Yeah. But there's another gift Jesus spoke about, and Amy, I'm wondering if you could read for us from John 14, verses 15 through 17. And some of you know Amy's done a lot of mission work, and I'm sure this text has been very precious to you, Amy, as you've, uh, you've said, God, uh, I need some help. Uh, sharing the gospel like Samuel was talking about, uh, what's another precious resource, precious gift available to children of the family of God? So this is John 14, verses 15 through 17, and this is New King James Version. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. <laughs> so I just, anyone ever been on a mission trip, mission assignment? I know Amy has. Uh, Travis, I know you have. Maybe quite a few of us have, okay? How would you feel if someone said, well, you can't take your laptop computer with you. You can't take one of the projectors with you. You can't take uh, a lot of free handouts. But y you can have the Holy Spirit with you sure. when you go on your mission trip. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Gladys, what would you say? I know you've been on mission trips. Yeah, I was in the mountains of Mindanao. <laughs> There's not even electricity. Okay, so, so the laptop wouldn't work it anyway. It wouldn't work anyway. So if you tell me, take the Holy Spirit, most definitely. Let's Amen. go. All yes. right. Yeah, you know, just thinking, we, we, we often think, well, I have food to eat, I have clothes to wear. But these are big gifts, right? Yes. The yeah. gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, yeah. Samuel? And in the first generation of Christianity, the apostles did not have laptops or projects. <laughs> they had the Holy Spirit, and, that's, yeah. and they spread the gospel. God turned the world upside down Amen. through them, right? Amen. Now, there's a beautiful verse, and uh, Sabine, if you could read for us. Uh, John chapter 10 is all about the Good Shepherd, but in John 10 and verse 10, could you read for us... Uh, Another precious gift, it, it's not just the gift of being alive, but something more. Yes, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and John 10, 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So what does that mean? Uh, what's the difference between... Oh, I think she's breathing, or life more abundantly. What, what are some components of that? Anybody, Gladys? To have a joyous life, to really breathe, you know, the salvation that God has given you. Because some people go through life, they're like, how are you? Uh, surviving, they're just surviving. Right. They are not leaving. So when you realize who is your master, who is your maker, who's your sustainer, you should irradiate that. And Gladys does that. Uh -huh. yeah. Now that's beautiful. Uh, and, yeah. and, and some know who've been part of our team for longer and some of our Hope Sabbath School, you've faced challenges in your life, but you still have life yes. more abundantly Amen. in Jesus, right? Amen. Someone else. Uh, Jason, what are some of the differences between just surviving and life in all of its fullness? So there are people, as Gladys says, who just kind of go through life. They don't really seem to know where they're going. I think it means having a purpose and being mm -hmm. able to give back and help other people. You know what you're doing in life. You know why you're here and you're able to help people, including sharing with them about Jesus. Thanks. All right. Uh, Amy, you have a thought for us. What, what, what is this difference between abundant life and, 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 and just surviving? Yeah, something that I like to say is that God wants us not just to survive, but to thrive. Mm. He wants us to enjoy an abundant life. And the, the really great thing about these gifts that we're talking about is that they're available to anybody, anywhere, regardless <laughs> of whether you have electricity, regardless of whether you own your own home, regardless of whether you have legs and arms. You know, it's, it's available to anyone everywhere. The Holy Spirit is available. God's love, the gift of salvation is available to everybody and it's available to share. So how and do we make we sure that, that we stay open uh, mm. to receive that gift? Let's look at a word of Jesus. Carlos, could you read for us from Matthew 6? It's part of the great Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, verses 31 to 33. Uh, Jesus gives us a key here 
uh, making sure we keep things in, uh, in the right priority, in perspective. Okay, I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek, for your Heavenly Father knows that you have need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Has anyone here ever been short of food? Okay. Uh, anybody here um, not had really good-looking clothes to wear? Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. So, what is Jesus saying when He says, all these things will be added to you? Anybody? What do you think? Gladys? Well, those things that He, he is listing here, they're basic needs. Okay. So, He's basically saying, if I can take care of your shoes, if I can take care of a piece of bread that you eat, I can take care of anything. So he's listing from the little thing that anybody can say, oh, anybody who's alive has. No, he said, I, I take care even of the smallest things. I can take care of the big things. All right. Anybody else want to respond to that? Because uh, it may just be oatmeal rather than mm. a fancy meal, right? But God's going to take care of you, Lalika? Uh, for those who have been in that situation, I've been. Um, I would like to share when I came, first came to this country seven years ago. And you came from the country of? Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. Yes. And you came with a vast amount of resources? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but God. Nothing but God. Mm. Exactly. And um, I was super stressed. Um, I would cry a lot. So um, thank God he took me. I decided to read, start reading the New Testament for some reason. When I got to Matthew 6, the things start changing. I stopped crying and I started believing. Because mm. here he asks you about um, trusting instead of worrying. I like the uh, verse um, 32. Would you like to read it for us? Yes. What, give us a moment to find it. What translation do you have? Uh, New King James New Version. New King James Version. And you'd like to read Matthew 6? 32. And verse 32. And you're reading through this, you're saying, exactly. and something starts changing in your heart. Mm. It is. And what did you read? Uh, especially the last part of verse 32, where he says, For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. <laughs> At that time, I, I was just, whoa, um, why should I be worrying? My concern should be seeking first His kingdom. Mm -hmm. mm. My heavenly Father would take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he did? He did. It has been. <laughs> <so bad>. <laughs> <laughs> and here you are now on, on Hope Sabbath School team with a vibrant faith in, in the God who's been your father. Yes. He's yes. provided for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Beautiful. Well, the psalmist has some other things to say about God's provision. And sometimes we miss it. We, we kind of read these rather quickly. Mm. But... Um, Brittany, would you read Psalm 23? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, we just read it. I don't know how you translate that into another language. But sometimes we read without pausing. But what's that first uh, insight there in Psalm 23 and verse 1? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hmm. Talk to me about that. What, what does that really mean in practical terms? Yeah. Well, God is the one leading and guiding us. A shepherd is taking care of his sheep, making sure that they're protected, that they aren't getting eaten by wolves, um, that he's leading them the way they should go. And I've seen God do that in my own life when I come to different circumstances and I have to make a choice mm -hmm. and there's a crisscross of roads and I don't know which way to go. Yeah. And I look to Jesus and he shows me, yet yeah, this is the way that I want to go. And he leads me and guides me. And there's been so many times where he's protected me, some that I know and some that I'll find out in heaven, um, <laughs> where he's shielded us from mm. things that we didn't even know were a danger around us. Yeah. So back to what Gladys said earlier, would you agree um, he'll provide all that we need? Yeah. Yes. Maybe when it says, I shall not want, it doesn't mean you get everything you want, right? No. <laughs> it means I will not be in need. In need. Yeah. Yeah. That he will provide everything we need. Mm -hmm. Harold? Mm -hmm. And I have a note for one, it says, I will not lack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to that need. 
<laughs> because many times we have this idea that, oh, we need to look like the person next door that might have the house and, and all these mm. things. Mm. But that's not what God is interested in. He's mm. interested in salvation and relationship. Mm. And he knows what you actually need at the moment. And I've seen time and time again when people who are doing missionary work they don't have anything, and at times they, they, there are other per people in need, and they give whatever they have because that's what God calls them to do. Jesus even sent the disciples, don't carry anything. Freely you have received, freely give. I'm going to take care of you. And I've heard of these people being paid in return even more what they have given because God knew what they needed for whatever mm -hmm. like, situation they were in. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to come to Sabina's point in just a minute here, but I think we need to read a text that reinforces that because the uh, Christians in Philippi were very generous mm -hmm. even though they didn't have a lot. Yeah. Uh, they helped support the ministry of the Apostle Paul and in Philippians 4 and verse 19, someone have that would read, Jason, thank you, Philippians 4 verse 19. Please read it in the context that Harold was talking about, that they're giving out of, um, not out of their abundance, but out of their limited resources to help the work of God go forward. And what beautiful promise does the Apostle Paul give to them? Jason? The New King James Version says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> My God shall supply all of your needs. <laughs> In the context that you're not hoarding even the little that you have, right? Yes. Sabina, you want to respond to that? Yes, I, I was just thinking here how God, He knows us much better than we know ourselves. And even yesterday I was sharing with a friend, I had a blessed day in the church and I was involved in, in the Sabbath school and after no, I went to visit a family in my church and I was just praying over them and their needs. And when I came back, I also had a friend call me just to ask for some advice and pray with her. And I ended my day with a sense of fulfillment that I could not really have designed that with my own hands, all these blessings that he has poured on me. And I'm thinking just about yesterday, what about all the other days that he comes mm. uh, and he follows through? So there is that also, the acknowledgement that not necessarily what I want is the best for me, but <laughs> trusting him that he knows me so well and so fully that just leaning on his provision is enough for me and know that I'm going to have more than I even want. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to testify. And, and maybe you're watching Hope Sabbath School and you say, I have a testimony when God provided for my needs. We know we're part of his family and how much belongs to him. Everything. And he wants to care for us uh, in, in many ways. Someone share a testimony of, of a time that, that God really, he cared for you as, as one of his children. Samuel? So when, um, when I finished my high school, I, I was praying to God, God, what do you want me to do? And he uh, led me in the path to uh, enter into pastoral ministry. And, oh. he, uh, and he was showing to me a direction to a college here in the United States. But growing up in India, of course, you know, m uh, money and means are not readily available. And so I was praying to God, if this is your will, if this is what you want me to do, open the doors. And God, through miraculous uh, ways, opened doors for complete scholarship, for visa, and wow. for everything that I needed to <laughs> come and study in this country. And Amen. so God really does Amen. supply our needs. Amen. Now, someone else is going to say, what's Samuel's email address? Because I want to get in <laughs> touch with the same people. But that's not the point, that's is it? That's not the point. The point is when you seek first the kingdom, Mm -hmm. yes. that the other yes. things you need will be added to you. Someone else have a testimony uh, of, of God's provision. I see a few hands raised. Uh, Brittany. Yeah, um, I saw it over and over again when I was Bible working for three and a half years. There was families that opened up their home to me that I'd never met before. Mm. And they said, come stay with us. And I lived with them. They fed me their food. Um, they, you know, took care of my needs. Sometimes they would even give me something before I even asked. For example, one time my battery on my phone kept going low and I needed it for my GPS to get to all the Bible studies and they put a battery on my bed like a rechargeable battery y you know you're gonna need this and um, <laughs> just different things like that um, my car broke down over and over again and there was a, a Christian mechanic in our church 
who took the car and he fixed it for me and I asked how much do I owe you and he said oh I don't have the receipt anymore <laughs> and over again when I found whenever I've been serving God he takes care of my basic needs and and provides for me through the family of God Amen. and that's beautiful by the way someone is gonna email and say can I have the name of the mechanic <laughs> but that's not the point either is yes. it Brittany was working as a Bible worker giving Bible studies seeking first the kingdom of God and the promise and my God will supply all of your, your needs. needs according to his riches uh, Alex yes whenever it comes to the Lord opening a way I remember actually not too long ago whenever we were doing a canvassing program which was very last minute it's like okay let's do it but we don't have a vehicle we don't have a place to stay in and then I, I we just I remember we all gathered and we prayed then I, I remember just contacting the church and they they willingly opened up it's like yeah sure yeah, and, and not only that but we have books that you can canvas too and as well as a vehicle so oh. it, the <laughs> Lord the Lord really and for those who may not know that means you were going and sharing Christian literature right yes. from door to door, door, to door. And God provided everything that you needed. Yes, the Amazing. food and everything. Gladys? Yeah, sometimes I think that uh, my vision is like limited. Mm -hmm. Like I put God in a box. I was looking for a place to live and everything that I was just like, a room will be okay. A room will be okay. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And God just kept saying, just be patient. Mm -hmm. And I just did not have the patience to wait for him. And when he provided, it was just like beyond my wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. So I would say that whenever we're asking God to supply our needs, we have to let him be God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. step out of the equation. Just let him do what he does best. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd just like to give our Hope Sabbath School members around the world, and then I'll come to Travis here. He's going to share a testimony. But maybe you have a testimony of, of how God, your father, who owns everything, provided for you in, in a wonderful way, maybe beyond your expectation. We'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org sshope at hopetv.org. We would be blessed to hear how God has provided for you. Travis, uh, share your testimony, how, how God um, provided and, and met your needs. So Derek, uh, my wife and I have had the privilege of, of um, assist, uh, assisting in the building of an orphanage in Malawi. And God has provided the whole way through to see this thing uh, complete in just like 14 months. But when we got it finished, we there's uh, it takes a certain amount of money every month uh, to keep this thing operating, to pay the chaplains and the teachers and whatever. And um, so last month, uh, we were $1,000 short. Every 30th of the month, we have to have enough money to pay them and for the food and whatnot. And so I told, we're getting down to like literally the last couple days and uh, my wife said, what are we going to do? And I said, well, we're going to have to just use um, our resources that God has given us to do that. I mean, it's our responsibility. You know, we started the orphanage. And um, so, so we come down literally to the last day and a $1,000 check just sh shows up in the mail and we're able to make the payment like right on time. And this kind of thing has happened through the whole 14 months, all the way, all the way. And I re just realized that those are his children. Amen. <laughs> and he's, he's going to take care of them. Amen. And thinking, God is so amazing because he always comes through for his kids. Beautiful. And, and many of the orphans in the country that Travis referred to are not Christians. They don't have a Christian family. In fact, they don't have support at all. Uh, what a beautiful way to reflect the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. I need someone to read Psalm 116 because I want to ask you a question. And that is, in the light of all of these blessings, how do we respond? Gladys, do you have Psalm 116 and could read verse 12 for us? Yes, I'm reading from the New International Version, Psalms 116, verse 12. And it says, Why shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? <laughs> so anybody, what would your answer be? Mm -hmm. uh, you, what translation was that, by the way? New International. New International Version. Uh, anybody have another translation? Jason, do you have New King James? I do. Would you read for us that uh, Psalm 116, verse 12? The New King James Version says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Mm -hmm. So what do we give the Lord? He's, the, he's our Father. He's the provider of all things. He owns everything. 
Brittany, there's not just one answer, but what comes to your mind? I think what he ultimately wants is our hearts, um, that we're willing to go where he wants us to go, speak to the person he wants us to speak to, be led by his Holy Spirit um, to share the love we've received from him to those around us. So isn't there a text somewhere that talks about a living sacrifice? Yes. It's like he wants our heart. Yeah. All right, somebody else. What, there are other things too. What can I render to him, Gladys? I said all. All of us, you know, mm -hmm. because our life, our time, our money, our resources, everything that we have is His. So He wants us to, to surrender all. Mm. Okay. Um, something else. Um, I mean, the Psalms is full of it. What can we do? Anybody? Yes, Alex. Yes. And, and it's actually in the very next verse. It mentions in verse 13. Well, give us a moment to find yes. it. Then what, where are you reading from? From... Um, Psalms 116. Psalm 116. Verse 13. Verse 13. Well, just we, we, want, we want to follow along with you. Psalm yes. 116. Is, I'm reading from the New King James. New King James Version. And what does it say? It says, and it says, in response to this question, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. That second part really gets to me because whenever I see that phrase, when people call upon the name of the Lord, it's like they're giving worship to them ah. <laughs> and really honoring Him for what He has done. So we give Him our heart. We give Him everything we have. We worship Him. We praise Him, Jason says. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does it bring joy to the heart of our Heavenly Father and to our Savior Jesus and the Holy Spirit when we lift our hearts in praise? Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Plus ourselves, we get joy too. Oh, you're yes. saying we get joy too, Harold, yes. when we yes. do that. <laughs> well, we've talked about how God has provided. I want us to move on in our last section to the responsibilities mm -hmm. that we have as part of God's family. And you might say, oh boy, now you're going to give me a list of rules. But I'd like someone to read the words of Jesus in Matthew 22. Samuel, if you could read verses 37 to 39, it may surprise some of you. It may surprise some of our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. Um, what, what is a major responsibility hmm. as part of God's family? I'm reading from English Standard Version. It says, And he said unto him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, first responsibility is to represent God. the character of our Father. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And God is love. 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 That's not just made up, right? That's in the scripture. Yes. And God so loved. loved the world that he gave. Yeah. So, to love him like Brittany said, with all our hearts, yeah. and to love each other, which is, Jesus said, the sign of discipleship, yeah. mm -hmm. is one of our responsibilities being part of His family. Yeah. What, about, um, what about obeying the Word of our Heavenly Father? Is that part of being in His family? Yes. Does that make us part of His family? No. no. <laughs> Talk to me about obedience, loving obedience. Anybody? Brittany? It shows that we trust Him, because if He's asking us to do something, there must be a reason for it. It's, mm -hmm. it's usually for our own benefit. Um, sometimes we think it's not going to be pleasant, but it actually it is a blessing to us. And so when we, show, when we obey Him out of love, it shows that we trust Him as our Father, mm -hmm. that he, he has our best interest in mind. I think there's a text also says that His commandments are not grievous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, God is not trying to make our life difficult, yes. right? He's wanting to bless us, and so when He gives us commands, by the way, one of the commands is to love each love other, love right? Yeah. Um, he wants to bless us in so many ways. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a couple of responsibilities that we may not have thought about. Uh, we'll study in this series about various responsibilities, but what about the responsibility of caring for your body? Mm -hmm. yeah. you're, you're a child of the king. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, why, why is that important? Anyone want to share the importance of caring for our body? Yes, Carlos. Well, God is the one who made our bodies, and He, he wants us to live up uh, an abundance of life, and we can't live it if we're treating our bo bodies unhealthily, um, a lack of uh, nutrition or a lack of good exercise or 
uh, whether it has to do with the mind even, um, we have to be able to really uh, give, a, give a really good example of how we should treat our bodies. So someone can look and say, wow, you look so healthy and happy, what's going on? And you say, well, I just want to honor my creator, oh, yes. my Father in heaven in every yes. way. Gladys? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's in the scriptures, and right? And that's in the scriptures. So yep. if, if our, t our body is not our own, we cannot treat it as trash. We have to make sure that we honor God with our mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else want to share? Sam, Samuel. And, and uh, God doesn't uh, take delight in restricting our diets and stuff. It, you know, that's not his intention. He says, don't do this, don't do this, because they are bad for our health. Mm -hmm. ah. and so that's, uh, he wants us to have this abundant life. And if we go on certain habits, mm -hmm. it is not going to give us that abundant life. So what does God do? Don't do this. And so by giving these restrictions, God is not restricting our happiness. He's enhancing our happiness. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm thinking in that same letter of the Apostle Paul that, that to Gladys quoted about our body being the temple of the Holy Spirit. He also says, whether you eat or drink, okay. yes. okay. or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Do it all to the glory of God. So yes. that would involve our relationships, yeah. our choice of occupation. Mm -hmm. We yeah. do it all for the glory of God. Yeah. Harold? And I just wanted to add is that how can God use us as well? Because if we're a family, we're supposed to be helping each other. And if yeah. we are in good health, even we'll be more effective at helping others who are even in desperate need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what about caring for the earth? You know, it's very, what, what's the word I want to use, uh, popular today to mm -hmm. talk about the environment. Yeah. Uh, some people say, well, forget the environment, you know, it's all going to burn up. But, <laughs> but really, as children of the King, mm -hmm. the creator of the heavens and the earth, what's our responsibility in terms of caring for the environment? Uh, Amy, what do you think? You know, people might say, well, I mean, should Christians recycle? You say, Derek, that's a pretty simple question. I don't know. What's our responsibility, Amy, to care for the earth? It's also one of the resources God's given to us. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, David talks about this in Psalm when he says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So it's a resource that God has given us. And certainly I think that we do need to do our part to take care of the earth. You know, Adam and Eve were meant to be caretakers of the earth. We've inherited that responsibility as well. So we need to do what we can to treat the earth as best we can. So then we should think about that before we pour um, toxic chemical into the stream mm -hmm. yeah. back behind our house, mm -hmm. because that yeah. stream's going somewhere else, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Plus the way that we care for the earth shows our respect for our Creator. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. We don't... Uh, what's the difference between the Christian attitude towards care for the environment and a secular person who speaks about worshiping Mother Earth? And what's the difference? Well, we know the owner. We know the <laughs> owner. That's right. Yeah. The, the Earth is not God. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Nature is not God. Yes. Our Creator is God. Yes. yes. But we honor Him yeah. by caring not only for our bodies, but for the earth that he's created. Yes, Jason. The earth is one of gr God's greatest gifts he's given to us. And so we care for it, not because we worship it, but we want to respect God who mm -hmm. is the giver of that gift. Mm -hmm. So let's close our study with a, a few moments of testimony. Maybe Sabina, I could ask you to begin. Um, can you share a time when God impressed you with the responsibility you have as uh, one of his children? You're, you're a daughter of the Heavenly Father. Uh, share a time that it just really impressed you. Wow, I, I have a responsibility as, as his, uh, a daughter of the King. Pastor Derek, currently, uh, you know, the church where I pastor, the ministry that I supervise is a ministry that cares for the community. It's a community outreach ministry. So I'm always in touch with a lot of people that have so many needs. And one of the ministries that we have been in touch with is a ministry with people that live in the streets, uh, sometimes because of illnesses, family cycles that have been trapped them in. And I oftentimes, I, I face them and I talk to them and I see how they are just people. You know, they're just people with, with needs and sometimes things happened that some of them were out of their control. 
And this gives me a great sense of responsibility to realize that also a lot of the suffering that happens in the world is a result of seeing and seeing in myself, seeing in other people. So that for me is so important that I look at them and see them as children of God as well oh. and be responsible. They're, they're our brothers and sisters, right? They're part of the family. Uh, someone else, just 30 seconds, a time when God impressed you, your responsibility as, as a child of the King. Amy, uh, share with us a time that you recognize your responsibility. When we were living in Bangkok, we became aware of a refugee community, a, a asylum keeper community who had come to Bangkok because they were experiencing religious persecution in their country. And um, there was one point where the immigration police were cracking down and arresting these people and putting them in the detention center. And a number of people were looking for a place to go because their apartment building had been raided. And we were looking for a place for these people to stay. And they ended up staying with another asylum seeker family in a one room apartment. There were about 20 people mm. and they were there for 10 days. And as you can imagine, they ran out of food really quickly. And my husband and I just prayed about it and felt impressed that we need to do something. But what do you do? How do you help when you just have enough to cover your own needs? Mm. And we just felt impressed. You need to help. And so we went to the, the market. We got rice and we got shampoo and laundry detergent and toilet paper. I mean, the, everything that this, this family would need to host these 20 people in their apartment. Beautiful. And you know what? We continued helping them. We got their kids in school. We, we paid for their tuition. And I don't know what happened because we did not decrease our, our income, our, we didn't decrease our personal expenses. We didn't receive any pay increase. We were paying more, but we still had enough. That is beautiful testimony, Amy. Income. That That's what God does when we recognize our responsibility and, and we are all part of the family of God, amen? Yes. Amen. amen. And I wanna sing again, I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm a part of the family of God. Let's pray that we would let that family experience impact everything yes. we do. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you for this word from you. We are part of your family. All your children help us to show your love to those that we meet and share the good news of salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. Don't forget that free resource. Go to our website, Steps Towards Faithful Stewardship great resources that will bless you. And then don't keep this wonderful truth to yourself. We're part of the family of God. Go out in the name of Jesus and be a blessing to those around you.